Hey guys, I'm going to keep talking about simplifying expressions today, um, but in some of your, you know, practicing math and such, um, you may have run into some expressions that they have like a confusing, seemingly random negative sign in them, and I want to talk about how to deal with those today. I'll show you what I mean in a minute, and you'll probably say, oh yeah, 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 I have seen something like that and wondered about it. So go ahead and make this the title of your next page in your math notebook. When you have done that, close it up. And listen with me till we get to we do. Um, the expressions that we, you know, our, our steps so far in simplifying expressions are um, add the opposite, no more subtracting. Uh, if there's any distributive property to do, do that. And then combine like terms, which is easy because now that we're not subtracting anymore, um, it's easy to combine like terms when everything's addition, um, not too bad. So here's what I mean by a confusing, seemingly random negative sign. Let's look at this one. Simplify this expression. When I look at this, there's this negative sign that's just kind of like, well, what do I do with that? Um, you know, the rest all looks fine. I, you know, I understand what to do with with everything else I see here. You know, I see a distributive property, I see some subtractions that I'm gonna to change to additions. But what about this? This is like negative and then there's parentheses. Um, and that's just really confusing. So let me tell you two ways that you could think about dealing with that sign. I wanna give you two strategies. So strategy, let's start with strategy number one. Uh, let's imagine what that means with the tiles, right? So I'm going to, for the time being, I'm just going to deal with the part that has this random negative sign. I'll come back to this other part later. But really, that I think you know what to do with. This is the part that's confusing. So imagine, let's just think about what this means with the tiles, right? When I see this expression, you know, the way I think of that is this is, means the opposite of x plus 3. That's really what that means. You can say negative x plus 3, but it really also, remember, negative sign kind of always means the opposite. So if what's inside my parentheses, it's like I'm taking the opposite of this. x plus 3 would be like one of these tiles and three of these tiles. Right? So I take the opposite of that. It's really just like I'm switching the signs on all those. And then, you know, the opposite of the x tile is a negative x tile. And the opposite of 3 is negative 3. And so, really, what that ends up being, this expression is the opposite of x plus 3 is this, negative x plus negative 3. So basically kind of just means like change the sign of both the things in the parentheses. I don't want you to really memorize that, but it's sort of just like that. Yeah, if I take the that and I draw it out with the tiles, I'm just going to take the, this, I'm going to think of that negative sign as an opposite sign and say it's the opposite of that, which is that. And now I could go on to do the rest of the expression, right? If I say, okay, I'm going to change that into this. And then I'm going to deal with the rest of my expression. I'm going to add the opposite. And so let's see, when I do distributing, it's going to be negative 2 times 4x is negative 8x. And negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. And now I have some things I can combine. And I end up with... Uh, 3 and negative 8x and another negative x is negative 9x. And I'm done. So the that's the, the first way to do it. So the first way to do it is to just think of it as being an opposite sign rather than a negative sign, and I think it's a little less confusing. The other thing you can do is if you just, if you're not really into the tiles as a strategy so much, um, you can, I, I, there's like an invisible one strategy. 
And before I show you how to do it with this, let me tell you what I kind of mean. If I, if I were to give you an expression like this, well, you would say, oh, well, that's equal to 9x, right? Because that's 8x, and there's one more x, and that makes 9x. There's no one here, no one showing you that there's only one x, because we don't usually put a one when there's just one of something. But it's, it's there. You know, if I were to ask you to combine that, you'd get that. But also, if I gave you this, You'd also say, oh yeah, well that's also 9x, because this is the same. Saying x or saying that there's 1x uh, kind of means the same thing. So the same thing kind of happens with parentheses. If, if you see, um, you know, you're used to seeing a number multiplied by the parentheses, right? Like 2 times x plus 3. If there's no number there, if you just see this, you know, it's really like you're saying there's just one set of what's in the parentheses. And if I distribute a 1, I don't change anything. You know, I get exactly what I started with. But you can imagine that there's a 1 there when there isn't. We just don't usually write 1 because it's kind of obvious that we mean 1. But it's not as obvious here. So when you see this expression we're trying to simplify... Um, I'm going to do my first step, which is add the opposite. Um, gonna add, here's a subtraction, add the opposite. Here's a subtraction, add the opposite. And then I'm going to do, so now I'm going to go to my random negative sign here and say, okay, if I'm not comfortable thinking of this as opposite of x plus 3, the thing to do is just say, well, it's the same kind of as imagining that it's a negative 1. It's negative 1 times x plus 3, and then it falls into my distributive property, <coughs> excuse me, set. I can just take it, I can imagine that there's a 1 there, and just say that it's a negative 1 times x, which is negative 1x, negative 1 times 3 is negative 3, and if you'll notice, I get the same thing I got over here. When I did the whole, like, make it the opposite, I get the same thing if I turn it, I make it be like a negative one and distribute it. So that's a second possible strategy for dealing with it. And then we get the rest. I'm not going to go ahead and do the rest again because you saw me do it last time. So my two strategies to deal with it are think of it as an opposite sign and then think of the tiles and just make them opposite or turn it into an invisible one. There is a one there, we just don't write it. So you can just make it be negative one times that stuff. Okay? Alright, open your math notebook and let's do one together. This one's a little different than the last one, but the same kind of thing is going to apply. Alright, what's tricky about this one is when we do the add the opposite step, you know, one of the changes doesn't make sense. Right? This one's easy to change to add the opposite. 5x plus negative 6. But this subtraction here, like, what do I do? Like, it's like 3x minus, if I change it to add the opposite, opposite of what? Like, it's like it adds a negative sign to all this stuff, which is kind of, again, that's one of those confusing negative signs that we ran into last time. So this is a very tricky add the opposite because I'm adding in here, I'm subtracting all of this, the whole parentheses. So down here, when I add the opposite, I have to add the opposite of all of this. I can't, I can't do this. I can't just make the negative sign go to the five. I can't add the opposite of the five, but not the opposite of the six. It's got to be the opposite of everything. So. So that's how that works out. It gets kind of tricky. So now I have a negative and the whole parentheses. So when I get there, two strategies. And it's all just which one confuses you less, I think. So strat number one 
is, think of it as an opposite sign, not a negative sign. Um, so what I do is I say, okay, that's the opposite. Let me write the expression down first so you see it. So this negative 5x plus negative 6, really I'm going to think of as being the opposite of everything that's in the parentheses. The opposite of uh, 5x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and negative 6, which is like 1. Oh, there's a red though. One, two, three, four, five, six. Negative, 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 negative. So I'm thinking of like the opposite of all that stuff that's in the parentheses. The opposite of these 5x and these negative 6. And so when I do that, I just change their sign. So the opposite of that is the opposite of 5x is negative 5x. And the opposite of negative 6 is is 6. So I'm going to take that and have it be the opposite of all of it. So I end up with that. All right, hope that makes sense. If not, strat number two is use the invisible one. You don't see it, but there's a one in front of those parentheses. Since there's no number there, it would be like silly to write it, but it would help in this case. Like there's really just one set of 5x and negative 6. There's one 5x and there's one 6. And so there's just one set of it. And so you can imagine that negative 1 being there. And that way you have a thing to change the sign of. When you do add the opposite, you're really adding the opposite of that 1, that invisible 1. So negative 1 times each of those things. So this becomes this, like 1 times 5x plus negative 6. And then you can distribute the negative 1 without a lot of worry. Negative 5x plus 6. And if we did that right, and I think we did, should match this. right? Either strategy should give us the same thing. And it did. So now you're ready to kind of deal with the rest of the problem after you've dealt with this kind of confusing, seemingly random negative sign. Because now I can simplify my expression to 3x plus negative 5x plus 6. And that's easy to just combine like terms and be done. All right. So that's a confusing, uh, it's one of the more confusing things I think that happens with algebraic expressions is that out of the blue negative sign. So hopefully one or both of these strategies help you deal with those and next time you see one, you won't worry about it or kind of say, oh, I don't know what to do with that. Um, this is a confusing topic. This confuses middle and high schoolers like very much. So if you need to go back and watch either of these examples again to get a better um, idea of it, please do. Uh, once you think you kind of got it, we'll give it a try in the UDs tomorrow. See you then.